Hello my little hatchlings. Uh, today we're going to be doing a miniatures painting, uh, li a little miniature painting kit. Uh, the particular miniature set I'm working with is the Lizard Men series from the Warhammer. Uh, I'm so getting used to this, so please do bear with me. Uh, I'll be working with Warhammer Lizard Men. And a personal favorite of mine, but you can use Space Marines, you can use um, Skaven. It, and to any of any of you who are not familiar with the game, they are known as a particular race. Uh, these races are there's actually two games for this for this particular set. There's Warhammer and Warhammer 40k. War, Warhammer 40k is more of a, an expansion on the Warhammer franchise, but it is also a completely different monster. Uh, the reason it's called 40k is it's literally 40,000 points, or if you wanted to get technical, uh, think of each... take my, my lizard man for it, lizard men, for example. This particular, per, this particular guy decided to go out and was ranked as one point. It would take 40,000 of him to play the game. And with that, we're going to go ahead and start our uh, paints. Alright, so we're sitting here. We've got our paints and our trusty little uh, pencil box. But if you have more than that, you can use whatever you choose. Um, personally, I prefer the, the pencil box for what I've got going with me right now. Um, Testers is a very reliable brand in my opinion, so if you buy a starter pack of their paints, you will get something that's like this, and I use it as a mixer, a washer, you know, something of that general idea. It has various steps for depending on how much of a particular type you want, and uh, they they usually last, their, their paints come in both acrylic and metallic as well as oil. Um... Uh, depending on how you want to paint these, you can go with liquid, uh, pastel-based acrylics, or you can use, you know, the testers acrylics, and in, the testers acrylics are actually pretty good, but they don't have the ability to shade as well, it, it, but they, they are very reliable, and would, they do very well at the bold, um, just the whole bold, boldness of, of a, of a color. So, to give you an idea of, of my level of craftsmanship, uh, I know he's he's missing an arm, so you'll be able to see the repairs later. But this is a Temple Saurus Warrior. Uh, I'm not sure if you can really see the detail. I know my shading for this is a little sucky, so let's just raise the lamp a little. Hurt my fingers while I do it, but I can live with that. Ta-da! Instantly better. But you can it, you can see the 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 gold from the acrylic and the uh, the skin tone are, are in my opinion pretty good. And I like the way it came out. Uh, my real pride though is that shield. The the shield I have right here. Nice bold colors. Nice uh, line work. I, I I wasn't particularly sloppy with this guy. But. Um, to anyone unfamiliar with the, the Warhammer series, if you hear the term Lizard Men, Skaven, Space Marine, these are the races, these are the different people you can run. And the whole rundown of the idea of Lizard Men is that they have a, or not Lizard Men, but in Warhammer in general, is that it's a strategic tabletop game. You literally take these, you move them as pieces on a tabletop, and you keep stats on a book literally in a book. I will show you that in a little bit. Now, one of the things I'm I'm going to be showing you, aside from how to assemble them and how to paint them, will be the uh, the the repairs in case any of your in case any of the pieces come off because you're using a a glue that doesn't last long or something. Alright, like so that. I've got my and hopefully I'll water be able cup. to take a couple other things in here. Right here. Uh, uh, I keep do up advise with that if you use a water cup, suggestions, you still take a cup on those or a mug guns. that you do not mind so, getting stained, because especially if you do, go with the, we will begin. Uh, 
official paint and colors just take a that they have to for the Warhammer grab and my a lot of other water brush. I do assume you will get that. stains on the inside of the rings. I also recommend that you clean them frequently to avoid the stain rings. Because and as a personal thing that I just learned, uh, this there is a large sulfuric smell that will uh, come after you when you finally do change out the water. So do wash and clean frequently after each and every session, and please make sure you you have a cup that you don't mind throwing away or don't mind having the rings in it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I personally do is grab the body. It's the largest thing you can paint. There's a lot of room for for mistakes, and you can go back and touch them up later, and it'll look pretty cool. Now, uh, mostly my recent theme with these guys has been, and I'll show you one I'm, um, I've been working on. I, I've stopped working on these for a while for some unknown reason or another, but the current color I used on this guy was a uh, Tester's Acrylic Green, which was right here. And... I liked the way it looked, but I also had a favor for their uh, oil-based green as well. So I'll be jumping around with a lot of different colors. Uh, and the great thing about the Warhammer series is that you, there's no official color scheme. You don't have to make your Space Marines look one way because it says so. You can make them however you want. So as long as their stats are fine you could have a, a mess of completely yellow yellow uh, warriors on one end and a completely blue set of, of uh, artillery units on the other and you'll hear me refer to them as units more often than I will as soldiers because they technically are considered units and it will encompass more of the franchise so first, of, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the overall body color and I'm going to go ahead and choose the uh, Sap green. I actually haven't used this one yet, so that'll be an interesting find. And then I've got to pick the brush. I would say a brush about like this. It is. Uh, I actually don't know the the brush type, but it's uh, it's very firm. Not not a lot of uh, give in it, and uh, doesn't fray. And it it does hold it does hold your paints very well. So what we're gonna do. I'll just move this up a little. I'm going to take the sap green. I personally try to move it around a little bit inside the container to make sure it stays all nice and gooey. You see, you can see the little bit, little bit of that. Nope, you can't. But you can see there's like bubbles, you know. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes with uh, paints like these, they, they tend to have that happen to them. So you just got to work it around a little. Do try to avoid too much stress on these particular um, types of paints because their case is a very thin metal and it will tear. I've had that happen to me a couple of times and it was not fun. So, now, now that we can start to see the, the paint actually moving around, I'll just put a little bit right in here. And you can use these to cat categorize the colors. Oh, there's, there's some more juice to categorize the, the color that you want in your paint uh, on your little paint palette here, but I personally I'll just put it wherever I, I feel the most need for it. Right, it doesn't look like this will work, but it will it will work as a solid color, but it will do nicely as a wash. So I'm actually gonna change my color and I'll do this a lot. Um uh, gonna change the color I have for this particular guy, and I'm going to find a color that's more stable, and let's see, another sap green, greens, I've actually been trying to break away a lot from the green uh, idea, so I think what I'll go with is this nice, uh, nope, that's a crimson red, but it, it did look like a nice shade of brown, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yes, I actually like Burnt Umber a lot better than Burnt Sienna. It's a, it's a bit of a darker brown. It has a... It, it'll just look overall better for a reptile. Now, I'm sure you're able to see that this isn't the, you know, easily gooey paint 
you know, easily movable gooey paint that you are probably all used to seeing, but it does do phenomenally well in my opinion. So, I'm just going to move it around a little, jiggle all the bits. Ta-da! Alright, now my brush is loaded, and we'll just start with a few nice and light strokes on the uh, the overall piece. Now, if you guys have any ideas on a particular camera setup that I should work with, because currently I'm actually using a webcam stationed on top of where I will be diving into parts, uh, if you have any ideas on something that would be a better layout for me to use, I'd greatly appreciate that input. But just a little, you know, light brushing here, light brush there. And it really doesn't take a whole lot to cover most of these models, but it does help to have a fairly ample amount on them, as well as in your palette, because the, these, the, uh, particular paints that I've got in the, in, where did I put that, there it is, paints particularly like this, as you can tell it's almost used up, but paints like this, they do tend to fade a little when you apply them, so you'll have to go over it maybe once or twice before you finally get any desired color, but the good thing is when you apply it the head use, you can, the way the uh, lizard men are, their scales allow you to spread more shadeable, uh, more shade along it because you're stretching out the the thickness of the of the paint. And uh, if, if you can tell what I'm doing from the current angle, and I'm sorry, I'm facing forward and you're at a, at a tilt, so. There we go. But, um, just quick light strokes. And now that we're almost done with the body, uh, I do try to avoid a couple major areas with the lizard men. One being their, their back spines, since, uh, they, they tend to have an armor plating of some kind over it. And that's, it is a cool way to, to, to utilize them. But it also makes it a little bit harder on on the painter, and I think that's one of the reasons why I like them is it's it's a little difficult to work with. Another thing I try to avoid is the tip of the tail. Uh, for this particular uh, lizard man, his tail has a uh, bit of a mace mace tip. It's spiked all around, big ball. I want to leave that alone because whenever they have armor on them, I try to leave the armor a totally different color and if you're like me you'll want something a little tribal so probably a, a, a copper or gold looking color and hell if you even want to go for it go for a black color but what other than that I just lightly brush and color the entire top or the entirety of the model and, uh, and I shouldn't really call the models I should be calling them miniatures because that is what they are but you can't really help it sometimes it's sometimes it is a model sometimes it's a miniature and in my opinion it's a little bit of both it's it's just the whatever you personally want to want to call it but uh a couple of light strokes over the entire thing and you can see now it's all nice and brown and these do come in pieces as as you no doubt can tell so we're just going to lay him as carefully as we can, and we'll, and they are freestanding by themselves. They they can stand. That's one of the brilliant things that these people have designed for themselves. But if you, as you can see here, this leg not really stable unless there's something to it. So we're gonna get the other leg as well. Uh, I'm gonna try and avoid this large spine right there because that's basically like a knee pad to him. I can already tell I've hit on it a little. Yeah, my light flutters. Yeah, 
and uh, sometimes your pieces will not come with the uh, little round ring right here that little peg like setup that will not always be the case with some of your models some of them will literally just have their arms uh, are flat much like him you can see there's no real dip point for the for pegging it's just glue and, uh, and apply and it it's useful when they combine the two together it, it makes it a little interesting it's almost like you're putting together a model but not quite you can tell this water is it's just starting to run a little so I'm just gonna add a little more a little bit more of the the goo there we go Now the problem with the paint that I'm using is it tends to glob, and when it globs, you don't really get a nice fade finish, so you've got to continually brush over to move it, and then it'll get that nice shade eh, that, that will be rather useful for later on. And, uh, let's see, I'm just going to set you more like that. You're going to want to lean. Alright, so, I'll set you like that. Now the head. And the head is usually the most tricky part, which is why I save it for last, because, as you can tell, he's got quite a bit of detail sitting on him. And I dropped him. But he does have a lot of detail in that area alone. And most of the time, I can't really get to it with my brushes or my by myself, unless I have... A magnifying glass, which I actually threw out my last one because it broke. And I'll shortly I'll be buying a new one. I'm gonna hopefully with you guys I'll be able to. Uh, I will be able to pursue my hobbies a bit more, and we'll all be able to see more professional workshop as the years go by. But just you know, light brushes, light paint. You can already tell he's starting to the. Get that brown on his on his large fin, and I would I, I call it a fin, but other times I'll also call it a a uh, a head fan because it, it they kind of remind me of the uh, Triceratops when with those. Now the problem with the most of the Saurus or the Temple Guard in the Warhammer uh, franchise series with the lizard men is that they tend to wear skulls as as part of headgear which will make it difficult to to paint them adequately and make sure you can get to everything the eye sockets and everything are small and it does tend to look rather crappy if you if you put too much paint in one area and not enough in the other or if you just don't paint it at all uh, some people may not want to get this detail. I actually know one guy. He didn't want to paint them at all, but he did not like the gray look of of how they how they were when they came. So he just took an, a uh, black aerosol can and just uh, just sprayed them all black. And now, since I'm getting into the finer details of the the head, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean off my brush. Make sure your brushes always do not have, always, always make sure this never happens. They do not have any remnant of the other, of the uh, last paint you used in it. Because that will crust up, will dry out your brush, and it will leave uh, dried up globs inside of, of your uh, future paints. So I've got him taken. I've got that taken care of, and now I've got to find some more of my finer tooth, and also my. Ooh, that that is bent. I hate when that happens, don't you? Looks like I'm gonna have to buy a new one of those. Uh, that is a seven, so I'm gonna have to buy a new seven. But I actually have a a little leeway in how I'll be able to go about this. I was actually able to acquire. Uh, several different kinds of brushes. Most of the time, the the uh, 
most of the time it was piece by piece or pilfering from the high school's uh, uh, storeroom in the art in the art area. S sorry, LHS. Um, it, ha it had to be done. But uh, I did. I actually I did go back and I did pay for them. So it's not like I stole them. Stole them forever. I did pay for these, so they are mine. Um, I have four ways to go about this. One of which has a very small, small tip, um, which can be useful for spotting, like right in this little skull socket. But it's not very useful for long strokes. I have something of a similar type which uh, would probably be better for the skull and these are for these are two similar ones that can uh, do the same job just a little bit more sloppily so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go with this I'm gonna go and if you guys know any particular uh, item that has a magnifying glass and as well as the pincers or something like that to help hold these model pieces in place for me so that my fingers don't always get in the way and I can get better at my brushes. I would love to hear where I can buy it, how to get it, how much it's going to be, you know, something of that extent. So I've got my brown, I've loaded up the brush, and these paints do dry very quickly, which is another bonus to the, the kind I'm using. Uh, I would tell you their brand name, but aside from the testers, I have no idea what they are. They came to me in a uh, pack that I that I obtained from a second-hand uh, at-home school student. Now I'm just going to be very nice and try and get into the nooks and crannies to get more of that flesh in there. Problem is we're going to have to dab a lot. I don't. It's not that I have a problem with with dabbing. It actually can be rather soothing to me sometimes, especially if I'm having a bad day. But it does present a problem if you want to continue your strokes so only really use these if you have to um, another thing that that I would like to point out about the Warhammer is that they have competitions for uh, artists who paint their 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 models if you paint any of their models and you can find a competition uh, you you will you take your model there, you enter it, and they will judge it. And they have a lot of high quality craftsmanship available in the uh, in in those little competitions. And they usually have rewards, you know, like fifty dollars, hundred dollars. I think some of the really good ones get put into the new uh, rule books, as well as a a larger prize and maybe get hired on by co by the company. I can't say for certain on that, but I can say it's it's a high probability if you are good enough and they do like you. Um, still dabbing along. Ta -da, da -da 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 -da. All right, I've dabbed them all out. The brown is done, so I can move on from the brown. Now, if you're wondering why I've still got that green sitting in my paint uh, palette instead of t dumping it out or so, it's because because of the way it was so watered down when I poured it out, I can use that more like a, a wash. And I'll explain uh, the use of washes in a little bit, but uh, it seems I got a little bit of smudge. I'll, cl I'll clear that up in a little. But now, we're going to be using uh, titanium white, a very very white uh, paint that hopefully is not washed and uh, if you ever pick up a rule book for the uh, for any of the models or any of the miniature kits they will give you uh, color names completely different uh, because they have their own specific brand as I mentioned earlier uh, I know one particular color they have is called uh, skull bone white or something like that, and I would say it's about the same kind of white that you would see inside of uh, titanium white from this brand. But I also want to say that some of the best best paint 
to use for the Warhammer series does come from their branded uh, their their brand of paints. So, got my paint loaded. And we're just gonna go along this the top of the skull here. You're gonna kind of want to lay it on thick at first, so you can really hide that gray. And if you're like me, sometimes a lot of the really thick white will be at the top, and you'll have to brush around a little. Want to get right into that nook a little, because you, I mean, let's let's be honest, skull skull cavities for the eye sockets, they're they're gonna be white. All right, got a big old glob up at the top here. I'm gonna scrape that off. Now I know my strokes look either rather sloppy or really rather uh, uh, hastily done, and it may be true, may not be true, but uh, I, I do tend to clean up a lot more near the end when everything's all said and done. But I do think he's turning out pretty good. He looks rather intimidating right now and he probably will later when I'm all done with him. Now if you guys have any suggestions on how to paint these guys, any suggestions on uh, strokes, uh, washes, tints, anything of the artistic kind that would rather help me out when it comes to doing videos like this it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, video editing uh, su suggestions also work because uh, I, I know I'm not one kind of person who would like to sit through 20 or so minutes of just watching somebody paint a head. So if there's a way you guys know of doing a uh, speed paint or a uh, something of that nature to to decrease the the footage length on the air and to increase the uh, the uh, quality overall of these uh, these videos I would also really really love that uh, let's see what else I'm gonna go into this teeth a little in the teeth you can't really see unless it's close up but I, I think he's turning out rather neat looking right now it's it's probably not some of my best work at the moment. And you probably aren't able to see it as well as you should. But I am working to get that brighter to you guys. So um, maybe if I slide this in a little more, we can see more of what we want. And yes, I know it's not exactly the best way to, to shade things and oh no oh, you know what let's just move this light around real quick oh. uh. you know I think that might work better for showing you guys Yeah, that works out a lot better. Alrighty. See? You learn things as you go. Always learning. Even in videos, that you, you, you never know. But as you can see, that titanium white is really, really bright. And if I get it any closer to you, hopefully you'll be able to, if I can steady my hand long enough, you'll be able to see some of the detail that goes into these guys. Uh, I'll work on a zoom function as well for this. Uh, I am literally brand new to a lot of this and it, it kinda sucks not knowing what you're doing. Uh, right now I'm trying to go in and paint the teeth and it's actually a little harder than it looks. A lot harder than it looks. Because when you brush on these teeth they tend to to spread around and get into the things they shouldn't. So I'd actually have to try and smear it you know what, I think that's exactly what I'm going to have to do. Uh, I also have really 
large brushes like this. You can get them at the hardware store. But I usually mostly just use them to smear. They're my smear brushes. And actually, if I can get them to uh, work right, they add a nice little rusted uh, quality as well to it. almost like a, a snow dusted uh, feel to him so now he's all dusted down and you can tell I, I have to redo a lot of this particular ah there we are nice and sharp you can tell I have to re -go, go back and redo this particular side of the head because it looks rather white compared to his uh, opposite side, which tends to be a little bit more con conservative in the uh, the white. Now, that may work to my advantage later, it may not, but for now, let us focus on the uh, body. We've got all our parts painted with their base coat especially on this body. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to go for the the secondary coat, the wash. The wash I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> this nice green that I've got sitting right in there. That greeny fluid. So if we just mess with it a little. Oop, drop them. Let's see if we can get this to work, shall we? It's definitely fluid, and it does seem to be soaking through and moving around those nice scaly veins rather well. And if I can just siphon a lot of this over, I'd rather be rather thrilled. You can tell, see how it's all bright over here, but on this side, I thought I turned that out by the way. You can see it's a little bit more faded. Um, like I said, I will work on a zoom function for this. And it looks like with the camera that I'm using right now, I will have to zoom out a lot more so you can see my brushing strokes. And then zoom in when I get closer to you. Or, or something to that effect. I, I have no idea how the, the dial on this Logitech webcam of mine works. Hint, hint. So just a little dash. A little dashes. That's all you need. Let's see. Yeah, I, I rather like the way that turned out. Nice, dark scales with a good wash. Nice green on him. Actually kind of looks like he's faded to match the the trees and the bark. <coughs> the bark on the trees and, and so on. And Let me get that white off of this guy. Um, I also use toothpicks on these as well. But those are for more, much smaller pieces, usually for uh, pterodons and such. Um, well, pterodons themselves are actually rather larger, but it's the uh, skinks. Very small, very tiny, very assassin-typed uh, creatures for the, the Warhammer series. Um, in, in the Lizardmen as well. Um, you can see we've got him all nice and scaled up. The only thing we got to do left is now the uh, claws and the spikes, as well as that tail tip. And I'm just going to leave him out to dry. Oop. There we go. Now we get to the really fun guy over here. And because he it's a bit smaller, a bit more confined, I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush. Um brush I d 
do prefer to use for, for smaller bits uh, would be this. Now this is more for, for after I've washed over the, the body with a, with its base uh, base color. And I actually do like layering my colors like this because it helps make sure that you don't have to wash what you wanted to be the main focus of the uh, whole uh, miniature to begin with. So just wash and wipe and noted little secret of mine on smaller pieces I flick a lot of the uh, the excess paint off and sometimes it'll get all my jeans over here and sometimes it won't now that we've got that taken care of we've got to worry about his claws and so that will leave me lead me into the next phase of our little adventure which brings us to our testers they come in jars about this big if you buy a case pack you can usually and if you look right here you can tell it does separate after a while jiggle jiggle so you will have to flick this around a lot They have screw lids, and sometimes the lids will get stuck. Looks like you're drawing out on me, so I will have to buy a new set set of that later, which probably isn't very good for me doing doing working with these in that video in this video. Um, but yeah, you're you're thinning out on me, aren't you? non-toxic water wash up anyway let's see will we use you yes we will we will we will continue using this brush that I have right now and it looks like this will also be a wash as well as a it'll be a mixture of a wash and a solid which I guess I can deal with that but um if you're like me and you like the tribal kind of look you'll want to go for something golden or copperish and uh, the neat thing about this tester gold that I'm using is that it has a nice slight glitter effect to it which allows uh, the, um, the 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 shine I should say the shine to show up more in the uh, In, in in the in the armor now for reasons of my own twisted uh, creativity I actually do go back over weapons and certain parts of the armor and add a more uh, crimson shade to it or a crimson wash to give off the idea that there is a uh, blood on them and why not I mean it they're in constant war if you if you want to go with their lore a lot more their their lore does say they are a very violent war driven race uh they're they are at war frequently with skaven and humans so why wouldn't they have a little bit of blood on them you know not in, uh, specifically on their armor because these guys are known for being rather resilient so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to stroke that up. Stroke. Stroke. There we go. I can say though the one downside with this drying out on me is it doesn't look as cool as it should. Which does kind of sadden me a little. And I know you guys can't really see it this well so I'm just going to... Do, 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 do. Ta da! There's a little strap right there, and that strap 
I'm also going to paint because it turns out to be a little if I can get the lighting turns out to be a little chest plate right about there and you can't really tell that because of the uh... ooh boy that is Ta-da! back to normal um, but that was because I painted it with the uh... a lot of the uh... uh brown but first I gotta make sure these guys get their daily coat like I said it's it's a downside when your paints are running dry and I'm pretty sure anyone who's been working on miniatures longer than I have will uh... will agree with me losing losing the color in your paints can be both a, a blessing and a curse and I wouldn't say losing color but losing their their their, their separating when they separate, it's a blessing and a curse because you can start using them for a wash. But if you really like that particular color and you want to use it as the base, you can't really do that. Another problem is it doesn't always pull itself out like it should. I think that'll about do it for him. So why don't we go ahead and leave that particular one to stand up on its own like it loves to. And then we get to the slightly more refined point, uh, actually a rather easier point for me, uh, is the headdresses. Unless of course you uh, add on, and yes they do come with slightly customizable parts, if you add on Ooh, I think I found my perfect balance. Uh, if you add on uh, headdresses, like with him, this top piece is a, a headdress that you can assemble for him and for other temple guards. But if you want to add something like that, you have to paint that as well. Uh, it, it is a must if you're painting them, that you paint it as well. And... Uh, when when you do it does add a little bit more of a task to the job but if you really like what you're doing it, it won't seem like a job whoop dropping my pens dropping my paints I'm dropping everything left and right so I'm just gonna touch that I'm just gonna brush up on that a little spin that around I'm gonna brush this as well and I think one of the things I will really like about this game is is that their lore can be very immersive to the the game itself for example um, if, if you were able to Create a lore where a character has create the lore where a character a not a character but a particular unit, uh, typically a hero or a champion for your people, uh, your selected people, is a uh, is one armed or or one legged. You can run that as long as you're still able to make a certain. Uh, uh, I, I would like to say certain. Um, regulations fall into play. I can't really say for certain what, what exactly you would need for something like that to work, because I've never done it. I always like my people to be 
you know, uh, fully, fully limbed. But, uh, I mean, that, that, that would actually, that would be something rather cool to see, you know, one-armed lizard men coming to attack your people. Alright, so, that does it for the body itself. Now one of the more fun pieces to deal with is the, uh, weaponry. And, uh, I'll get into that in the next video, because I need time for these to set and dry, especially with the testers. The testers will take, uh, a little bit longer to dry, and a little bit longer for them to to set, as well as, as stay in place. And they do flake if you rub them too much, so you're going to want to be able to make sure you don't handle them very often, and if you are able to get a hold of them, they have specific foam cases that make it easier for you to transport your pieces without being able to flake and rub them too much and having to repaint and redo it several times over. So, Alright guys, so as promised, I'm going to show you a setup of, of the the books, or yeah, the a book that you will have to keep all of your stats in if you decide to play the uh, Warhammer you. game. All of you. And this is actually my own particular setup, but you can design it however you like. I don't think it's uh, necessary to have a notebook with all stats and references and whatnot, but it does make things a lot easier than having to think and go through the 20 different rule books that they'll have. Uh, Lizard Men right now, mine is actually an outdated copy, but this is a race specific rule book. There's also the Common Core rule book, which is a lot thicker and takes on a lot more of the rules. But, uh, you start, how I start it is uh, something similar to this. It, I don't think you can really read my writing a lot, but um, let's start down here. And you are uh, move, speed, it, it helps this here along the top reminds me what each of these little initials is for and how they work. Uh, in case you can't really see them, M, S, B, S, uh, S, T, W, I, A, L, D. And uh, down here you have the list of each of the specific uh, units in the game and their little bonuses. Uh, for example, the Croxicores, Scaly Skin, Fear, Aquatic, Skirmish Screen, and then uh, it, it keeps going like that for a while. Uh, I use a regular composition notebook because uh, the pages in my, don't tend to fold a lot with me. Um, so they stay rather well. Uh, it continues on down, and if you're smart enough, you'll write down their their page numbers so you can find them a lot faster when it talks about that specific skill. Uh, references, and this right here is a little chart I made, a little sloppily done, but it tells you the individual stats of uh, each particular uh, unit. For uh, example, a... Uh, a Saurus veteran has a movement of 4, a uh, WS of 5, BS of 0, S of 5, T of 5, W of 2, T of 3, A of 4, but an 8 in, in LD. And if I, if I ever forget, well, what does W stand for? I'd flip back, go, oh, W is... Uh, God. Sometimes it's hard to wounds. Sometimes it's hard to read my own writing sideways. Uh, w is wounds, whereas LD would be leadership. And then, if you wanted to get a running total of how many of them per, uh, how many of them you have currently in each subset, you would run something like a tally chart like this and continue it on over to the other page. And then you can get into your. Uh, this is where you get into the really specific stuff. Uh, this is where your points start coming in. Each unit has its own base point, uh, its base value. For example, a Saurus Veteran starts with a base um, setup of, uh, of 85 points. 
then it gain then it would gain five from scaly skin and I kept I would keep a running total along the side and erase later when I got the final value and after that I would total them all up over on the side here you would write out uh, how many of each you had and you could multiply that by however many and that's about as far as I go with this at the moment because I haven't had a chance to add anything new or any or play the game in a while. I've actually never played the game and because I've mostly done it for the models. But that is the book that I did promise to show you and as well as I'm going to show you how to repair uh, or more or less reattach a missing part. Now if you're like me you'll tend to lose a lot of your parts and you hope to God that you're able to re reproduce it. In this case that's not the issue. I kept all of my pieces together. It didn't fall very far, so I can just reattach them. I use Gorilla Super Glue, and before that, I actually just used regular plastic uh, modeling glue. But the, uh, a as you can tell, it didn't last particularly long. And like with all super glue, you don't need very much. Just a little, doop. There you go. Touch of love. A little touch of love and then you would just take it and you would press firmly into position now the problem with the the uh... the sores is that their uh... the way their their arms or their stance and so on don't really make it a easy to do uh... fix because if you have a temple guard like i just rep repaired he tends to have a lean in how he's built so if you're putting a shoulder which is naturally curving itself inwards, you're you're gonna have a bit of an issue. But as you, but I do like the way that super glue will hold these together, and as long as you're not throwing them across the broom, they'll stay together fairly nicely. Still looks pretty good. Good old temple guard. And as I mentioned earlier, the little crimson stain or wash that I did on the the weapon, and not necessarily the armor for this guy. I felt the the little blood tip on on his little uh, primitive scythe machete going looking thing there was pretty good. And uh, anyway, that is the source and the uh, book that I did promise to show you. And so, hey guys, uh, thanks for for sticking with me through that entire video. I know it wasn't exactly the slickest, quickest thing in the world, but I do thank you for sticking with me with that, uh, and yes, if you caught on to that in the beginning, I did start calling you all Hashlings, because I, I've always been a, f a fan of, of dragons and reptiles, and it's just my thing. I like calling people Hashlings, it makes me feel like I, I look over them a little, and not, not to sound pretentious or anything like that. But, thank you all for, for watching the video, comments, suggestions, and such, leave that in uh, on the bottom, and please be nice to each other, I don't, I don't like having to come into a flame war because if I see that yeah I don't I, I, I don't want to see that uh, I'll, I'll have to turn the comments off and then neither of us gets any benefit because if you have a question you won't be able to ask it and anybody else with a similar question will send the same thing to me directly and then we'll be I'll be getting 20 30 emails a day of how to do some one specific thing and nobody wants that so thank you please stay tuned I uh, will get back to you with another video soon and as promised, I will uh, start informing you of my wife and her art as, as much as I can. Uh, please keep the comments and, and suggestions coming. I do look forward to hearing from you guys again. So, see you all uh, in the next video. And yes, you are my hatchlings.